I just got back, had a meeting with the cell this morning. For how long? Hey? How long was that meeting? Oh, let's see, 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock or so, 12 o'clock. And uh, then I had to grab some tarps that were blowing all over the place. Uh, yeah, it's been a windy. What time is it now? It's uh, one thirty-eight, almost 2. Yeah. So, uh, so, um, so I, I got a tent up. You, you set it up? I did it by myself because Jennifer sent me the video. Okay. And I looked at the video, uh-huh. and uh, that was uh, Friday. Uh-huh. And uh, it was raining. Uh, I don't know if you know what it's like to try to work outside when it's raining and you wear glasses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not fun. Not fun. So, and and putting up a, a tent with the wind and the rain was not fun, but I got it done. Uh, yeah, that's a positive. Um. Did well, there were there were people who said they'd be here on Wednesday, but then on Wednesday, the damn thing didn't arrive until uh, like three o'clock in the afternoon or four somewhere in there. So it was too late. There was like a whole thing behind that, like just like they held it. They held it on purpose. Yeah. No doubt about it. They claimed it was too heavy at first, and then they admitted that there was uh, um, it had come from California, so it crossed the border, and they wanted twenty four dollars and forty eight cents from a guy who bought it and bought the heater and lives in in uh, Scotland. So. <laughs> They are the worst government in the entire world. Right now, we're investigating their role. And uh, which government? Government uh, has sent me papers demonstrating that, uh, at least at their level of. Uh, uh, the Canadian government collecting and paying out, uh, uh, what do you call it, retirement Mm -hmm. benefit, did not uh, ask for any money, uh, claim that the claim that was made in 2003 and backdated has has been uh, <clears throat> uh, shut down with a uh, notice not to not to attempt to claim that it wasn't it wasn't legal. It was a uh, the government coming into power, which was uh, liberals. Uh, would not have done it, but the government that was in power did, and then backdated it to a time when the liberals were in power, so they would take the blame. But uh, they they showed me that no deductions have ever been made from it, and I've I've warned them that uh, any deduction following my demise is uh, twice what it is before, and if they don't remove the thing from the uh, 
the documents that were done and, and deleted completely, uh, their penalty is a thousand years uh, in the waiting line, two thousand if I've died. And and in the waiting line, there's a bridge that rises uh, that allows people to see how well off they would be if they were in paradise compared to just waiting in line, which is not hell, but it's it's certainly not paradise. And once they come off the line, they have to go into the courtroom, sit in the audience, let everybody in the audience go through that got there ahead of them, and then have their own trial, and and then they don't know whether or not they'd be sentenced to uh, the Pacific or Paradise. But they won't know for at least a thousand years if they don't take the documents off and return the money. And and that's uh, a division that's provincial called Service Canada. <laughs> so they are the ones that put in the poverty surplus. If uh, if your pension doesn't meet a certain level, then they have to meet it. And for me, it's been deducted that nine hundred bucks has been deducted for five months now, so that's $4,500, 4,500 years. Hmm. Is they not on yet? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, he would say something. Yeah. He should, he should be on. So. I'll have to repeat myself. Uh, that's, that's, um, crooks, criminals, right? Yeah. That's what they do, they steal. Or predators, right? I remember we were discussing predators years ago. Yeah. That they take and they go somewhere else with it, you know? They yeah. Take. And, and when I got to the bank in June and I saw this on the screen, the screen was totally different from what I normally would see. And I stepped back and the cells stood in front of me and took a picture of the screen and sent it to Antarctica. And they did a search on it and it came out to be uh, a bank in Chicago called the Private Bank. And uh, when, uh, when we looked at who owned the private bank, it's CIBC, Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, my bank in Kempville. And uh, uh, the Im- important word in there is Imperial Bank. Imperial means royal. So it's basically linked to England's uh, MI6. So now we're down to two possibilities. Service Canada, which is provincial, and Imperial Bank of Canada, which is foreign and English. So this private bank, oh, I'm looking it up right now. It says Private Bank, Chicago, Illinois. Yeah, uh, owned by CIBC. The private bank. Oh, no, that's not it. Oh, okay, it says CIBC U.S. online. Management. Hmm. Is this the one, it's, does it say 120 South the South Street? Is that it? Well, there's only one in Chicago, I think, and and uh, it's linked to my bank in Kempville. It's called the private bank, and we know yeah. Chicago. 
Yeah. Um, mafia factory. Yeah. It's on. where they launder money. They steal from seniors' pensions and launder it in uh, a place near Mississauga and transfer it to Chicago and then on to the U.N. And and for use by the bureaucrats at the U.N., which are mostly Nordic places like Sweden and northern Germany and Finland. Now, what, 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 um, what criminal activity do you think, you know, like the Swedes and stuff, because it, it's like famous that, you know, people use uh, offshore accounts and... Well, you got to remember that that entire Nordic group uh, is between the two biggest countries in the world. And uh, they control Greenland as well. Mm. So you got Russia on one side, you got Canada on the other. And the only break is Alaska that has a panhandle uh, with uh, a city named after a Russian city. Um, And you had a woman from there run for president or vice president some time ago. Oh, Sarah Palin? No, 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 I'm thinking. I'm sorry, I'm thinking. I'm thinking the Say lady. Say that from, again. I said Sarah Palin, but I think yeah, I think Sarah her, Palin. Oh, okay. Where she come from? I thought it was like Alaska or something. Was yeah, she's Alaska? from Alaska, but in the Panhandle there. Uh, Russian name. Well, uh, Siberia? Uh, no. No, it's it's linked to my trees out in front. There are these spruce. The uh, spruce. Oh, no. 40, 49 Spruce. They're named after the town she comes from. Just look up Sarah Palin, place of birth or... Sarah Palin. Mem- or, or member of the House or something. Please, uh, Candidate for president. South Palin, place of birth. Oh, no, that's not right. It says she was born in Sandpoint, Idaho. Wow. She may have been born there, but uh, she lived in Alaska. Okay. Where's the... What's, the, what's the town right in the middle of that peninsula that comes down British Columbia? Well, it says here she's elected to Wasilla City Council. No, that's not. That's That's not the name. I keep forgetting names that I've said a million times before. That's happens to me too, Glenn. I think it may be linked to diet. Yeah. If you're not getting enough vegetables, vitamins in your diet. I'm getting too many vegetables, not enough meat. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's what happened. That's I'm trying to eat more vegetables these days. Uh, I don't know. Jennifer would know. Yeah, she <laughs> she, knows. <laughs> she knows everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So how uh, with this tent? Uh, how how does it fit your knees? Is it sufficient? I mean, I, I know a house is always a lot better, but... Well, right now, what I'm trying to figure out is what is the proper amount of wood to put into at the beginning so that it doesn't get too hot. Because right now, it's uh, it's uh, leaning on the edge of too hot on the 
on the stove's thermometer. That's what the thermometer says for you? Well, it, it's about uh, almost on the line going into too hot. Now, all I've put in it is one piece of wood on top of some cells, uh, some, no, not cells, what do you call them, wood pellet. Uh-huh. Wood pellet, uh, chips, you mean? Like, what's your... Yeah, I put a, um, a handful of wood pellet chips and a log on it, uh-huh. and then uh, a little bit of starter and lit it up. And uh, on my indoor thermometer, it says... Um, 33 degrees Fahrenheit, no, 33 degrees centigrade, 80, 90 some degrees Fahrenheit. So obviously I got to put in less wood, either no pellets or a smaller piece of wood. And I'm thinking if you're putting a log, that's pretty, I don't know how thick the logs are you putting like half a log? Because are you chopping them in half? I'm oh. not chopping it. I bought it as firewood. What happened to all that wood that you chopped in the past? You have to um, uh, hold it for two years after cutting it so that it evaporates. Uh, and then you can use it for deliveries to customer. And um, a cord of wood, there are, there's the phony cord and the real cord. The phony cord is called a face cord, and a real cord has three uh, piles, one next to the other deep, and it costs $300 whereas a face cord is a third of that, and it costs $100 once because they won't deliver it twice. They deliver it once so you can test their wood. And then when you buy, you have to buy it by cord, which is $300. Wow, that, now this, is another, this is something I didn't think about. Uh, now you got to pay for wood? Yeah, well, I I wouldn't have to pay for wood if I had somebody helping me cut wood while I'm doing the rest of the work. But right now, that's not possible. Somebody has to come with a chainsaw because my two chainsaws died over the last five years uh, and, and cut up pieces of wood uh, to the size that can be used inside the furnace. Uh Uh, You know, I got a shortening day when daylight diminishes, rain on my glasses, and uh, only an axe to cut wood while I have to take care of everything else. Oh, so, Dana's on, by the way. Oh, hi, Dana. Hey, Glenn. Do you want me to start over? <laughs> no, no, I've been on for a few minutes. Since the oh, okay. Topic, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good. You're efficient. Yeah. <laughs> So now I guess we could work on um, you know how finding much a piece of wood cost when you pay for it at three hundred dollars a cord. One piece is forty four cents. Huh. Uh, how big is that piece now? Well, they they are all about the same size. Some a little thinner than others, but the length is all the same. All right, so you you, you think uh, you could use like a fun pool of fun together for wood? That would not be a bad idea. Until we have somebody here who can cut the wood, 
because we certainly have plenty of wood, but it's it's a matter of somebody, uh, basically two people, uh, one on a tractor with a trailer, the other one cutting the pieces and throwing it in, in the trailer, and then the trailer driving back while the guy continues to cut. And when it gets too hot, I get a beep like that from uh, uh, a device that Jennifer sent me. And it says, open the w- the door. <laughs> oh, that's pretty nifty. That's pretty useful. Yeah. That was a good idea. Yeah. Well, I guess you'll really see, you know, once it's really cold out there and how quickly the, the heat dissipates you know, because it's going to be radiating. Yeah, it's going to be different once it gets really cold. Yeah. The other thing I need is two pillows. Two pillows? I put a bed in, and I have um, specialized stuff that goes on on top of the the, uh, spring, and... uh, then I have blankets on top of that and a sleeping bag from my friend in in uh, Scotland and um, the stove came from him and her as well. So I need two pillows and wood, <laughs> firewood. Uh, two pillows and firewood, okay. And I don't want uh, rubberized pillows, if possible, because uh, they uh, they basically are, uh, what would you call them, fire hazards. I, I saw a pillow the other day when I was actually looking, shopping for a bed and mattress in bed. Um I saw memory foam pillows where um, it's like uh, the foam has like, it's like a different texture and you could, it's in a case and you could uh, wash the case. And yeah, the pillow back that would in. be great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'll go see, go look into that, I'll go. Over there. I don't know how expensive pillows are. No, they're, they're, they're these are like a hundred uh, a pillow. Huh? But they're comfortable like though. Too much. No, but that would be com- <laughs> you're living in a tent, so might as well be comfortable, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I could save up and get that and. I don't know about the wood. I guess I could just, I guess whoever, uh, me or Dana, whoever, could just send you those money orders and you could just buy the wood. Right. Yeah. So it always seems like we're going, uh, uh, it always seems to be a connection to Scotland. <laughs> yeah. I've noticed. But I am. Uh, uh, are the two groups of people who came on one day at the same time and together who didn't come together to happen that way. Uh, one one came from Scotland and one came from Brockville. In Canada, the last place I would expect to see anybody come and help me would be Brockville. And in Scotland, the last place was people who would come and help, and and both groups did a fantastic job here. You can't prejudge even on the purgatory doorstep to hell. You all. Is your phone uh, is your phone moving? Are you are you moving? Cause uh, it seems like something keeps moving over your microphone. I'm holding hot, so I'm trying. 
is kind of. Doing that there? Yeah. Can't really hear what he's saying. It's like he's busy moving around something. Hello? Yeah. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. The context is how much uh you cut out uh, all i heard is all I heard you say was how much wood, and then uh, you sounded like you were far away and how much yeah I, I can't hear you and I can't speak any louder. Than well, are, are you doing something? Or are you you're moving something? Are you working right I'm now? I'm lying on my back. Uh-huh. I have the base of the telephone on my chest, upper chest just below my chin. Hmm. Now, how much do you move under those circumstances? <laughs> I, don't know. I think maybe some of your clothes are touching the microphone. Yeah, something keeps and rubbing put, against put the, the phone microphone. Over. Yeah. The microphone on my phone is at the top of Oh, so I maybe. Hmm. Well, um, I don't know. It's uh, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe your the hair. Phone is too hot. You said the phone is too hot? Could be. If it's not that, it's not that. Uh, usually when I hear that sound in the microphone, like when I'm talking or something, it's something rubbing up against that, that, uh, that, the, the, the microphone. Or like, uh, I don't know, it could be your finger, it could be your beard, it could be hair. Supported facing out. If I lay it down, does it change any? Now, at, now you sound clear. Okay, so now the phone is laying down. Okay. Remember that. All right. <laughs> Just <laughs> below my chin. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. So what is it that you don't know about how I'm living in the tent? I'll repeat here that in the morning, uh, I've been testing a different amount of wood to start the fire. Mm -hmm. And uh, I am putting a handful of wood pellets on the bottom of the stove on which I add uh, a fire starter uh, from uh, uh, the propane uh, not propane but uh, from the stove I have not the stove the other stoves I have Uh, $24 plus tax, $28 a quart. So it's not gas, not going to blow up on me. And then I put a piece of wood on top of that from my firewood collection of last year. At that point, I take a match and drop it on the fire starter and it starts heating in the wood pellets. And when it gets uh, hot, uh, hot enough down there, it starts the fire in the piece of wood. 
All of that is directed by the amount of air entering the stove. The stove has a control that allows you to open up um, one, two, three, four holes in the door. If uh, you want to limit the amount of heat, you can shut the thing down by a quarter or a half, three quarters or all of it. If you shut it all, the smoke can't make it up the chimney because it doesn't have any air pushing it and the alarm will go off. So you gotta make sure that those holes are either open completely or close no more than half. When they are operating uh, uh, properly, they burn together. And at this stage of the game, it's too hot. It goes on my thermometers, my furnace thermometer goes up and it's right on the line and it's 33 degrees Fahrenheit inside here, uh, 700 degrees Fahrenheit on the thermometer. So what do I do? Do I cut back on the wood chips or do I cut back on the uh, wood itself? And uh, right now I've tried three pieces of wood, two pieces of wood, one piece of wood. And so now I'm left with no pieces of wood. <laughs> so I can't do anything until it it cools down to zero and then try again tomorrow morning without wood or without pellet. <laughs> I would I would maybe I don't know, maybe you could just put the wood in first and then if it's too low I guess you you add the pellets incrementally. It could be I can try that tomorrow. What about controlling the dampers on there? Well that's what I was talking about, the dampers uh and the controls to put air in so that it can go out the chimney where it has the damper and it's wide open. So if I shut it, it's going to be hotter still. So it's wide open and still overheating? Yes. Now that, that thermometer, it's, is it designed for your... Especially for the stove. Oh. It's got a magnet on it, and you put it on the surface. I've got two of them, so I put one near the front and one near the the chimney. Now, you able to cook your food in that thing? Or? Yeah. I uh, I had breakfast on it yesterday. Now, all you have to do is put your food in a frying pan, which I have, or a um, fireproof, uh, I don't know what they call it, glass-looking thing, and it uh, heats it all up. frying pan will fry eggs. If I'm uh, if I'm using stuff out of a can, I would use the glass thing. Oh, like a Pyrex type of thing. Pyrex type thing. Yeah. That's it. And uh, if I'm using cans, usually a meal is two cans that I put together as one. One usually has the basic, you know, chicken and turkey or beef or whatever meat. The other one has a more saucy 
or veggie type filling and when I mix the two of them I make the better meal than either one of them by themselves so you can you can buy like um can I guess like poultry can you buy stuff like that or beef in the store does it have to well i I haven't bought any but uh i I've been given uh a steak uh beef steak by a taxi driver and simply putting it uh, on a sheet of uh, aluminum foil uh, on top of the surface of the stove, it acts like a frying pan, and it doesn't uh, leak more than a little bit, contrary to the canned stuff. So it doesn't need the containment and uh, is uh, is easier to cut if it's on a piece of aluminum foil because uh, you're not rooting your pan while you're cutting it. Hmm. Hmm. Those are all things that I have never had to live before. Uh, Same thing with uh, uh, putting up stakes to hold a tent is usually done with six inch stakes because you're putting it up and taking it down and putting it up and taking it down but for me it's putting it up period and has to survive what we've had over the last few days the the biggest wind gust that you can imagine um and uh, what I got was 30-inch uh, uh, stakes and replaced the 6-inch uh, stakes, and nothing moves. But I only have a few of them, so on on order is, is uh, I think, a dozen more. And by then, I'll have the stakes all around the tent. There's two levels to staking for for the tent. There's the base level, and then there's a middle level that pulls out the the middle, gives you more space internally. Uh, So when the other stakes get here, I'll be able to uh, uh, stake the uh, the outside uh, highest up uh, links and and the tent of course is not budging uh, as is but that provides the eternal guarantee. Hmm. So like uh, like frozen food like it's. How would you like to frost it? Like, you know. Well, you just leave it in the tent uh, when it's on normal, and it'll defrost. Mm-hmm. Um, and and chicken uh, or cat food coming into the tent is not frozen, mm-hmm. but being here is going to prevent it from freezing. So uh, that was one of the major problems last year is you you get a, a can, you open it up, it's frozen. won't come out of the can. So you know all the other cans are the same. So trying to go outdoors and light a fire in a stove outdoors uh, took about an hour to an hour and a half. And then you had uh, to put the cans that you were going to use that time, which to me is about 30 cans, you have to line them up on the stove uh, and try to get them off before it burns or burns your fingers. Uh, 
in the rain, in the snow, in the wind, it's not the easiest thing to do for a, a guy 79 years old wearing glasses. So inside the tent, it means that all I have to do is put the case there. And when I need a new case, it's come out from where the cats are because the cats are in the house. <coughs> Pick up a case and bring it back to the house and feed them from that. It, it probably never will need to be put on the stove. So I, I'll only know how much space I have for stacking stuff when I, I put the next layer uh, uh, into the ground to hold the middle part further out. And uh, then I'll know exactly what to do. But if I, you know, if I had uh, helpers, uh, like the helpers I've had from you and and I don't know who's listening, Jerd, mm-hmm. Jerd and Danny. Uh, Tom was a really good helper too. You you were a great help with the chicken coop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you remember. Yeah. And uh, uh, so was Danny with other things. And these uh, people from Brockville and Scotland were both uh, helped, one in bringing people here, another one in bringing uh, food here. Uh, And then when the people came from Scotland was not only bringing food, but also bringing uh, (coughs) um, hard labor. They they spent I don't know three or four days, uh, two or three hours at a time uh, digging, and that would have taken me until the snow falls, and then I I would have ended up not being able to finish because if it didn't snow till Christmas, I'd still be digging. <laughs> and and of course the adifo needs that from the air for when they choose to land uh they now have basically the the two directives they need a hole in the middle 18 feet off the ground so they know how to come down to 20 feet without going too far down they have a 20-foot ladder, so they come down to 20 feet, and they, in order to position themselves east, west, north, and south, they have the circle, um, which won't be visible when it snows, but as soon as the weather clears up, what you have is a green interior and a brown circle, which is about uh, a yard wide, uh, the same size as the adifo. So it can come down right at the center of it, drop its ladder, either deliver something or pick up something, whether they be cats or or uh, people, bring them up, shut the gate. By the way, uh, in case you don't remember, the word adifo is all direction flying saucer or flying object. It's like a flying saucer. (laughs) Probably (coughs) made in the Moho discontinuity and rising out of an extinct volcano, or optionally be going back in time without the knowledge of anybody, Canada was the leading force in build, building 
uh, flying machines, both in speed and in uh, version, whether they be airplanes or uh, flying saucer, atifos, they call them. Um, So I don't know where the one will come uh, is from originally, but obviously one of those two places. And, And that's why people have seen what they call flying saucers, because if you're underground, you can't have a, uh, uh, an airplane because there's no runway. Mm-hmm. So whatever you have has to be round and, and rise and fall in, in a single place like an extinct volcano. Yeah. They have a big advantage that we don't have is, of course, they're not always visible. In order to see a member of the cell, you have to be approved by creation and the court and then the cell on on request, on its own request, can turn itself into the electromagnetic self, which we used to call a ghost. Yeah. So when when uh, people go looking for them, uh, they can't see them. And and when I ask. Why me? Well, you heard the answer. Yeah. So how did um, how was that visit from uh, these guys from uh, Scotland? If I had visitors like. New York, Brazil, and Scotland all the time. Things that need to get done would get done much faster. But I have a hernia, and I'm going to be 79 in January. And uh, there's a limit to my energy. Yeah. Although people say I look better than most people that are 50 or 60, I still have a lack of energy because of that hernia. The only way I can get back to normal uh, or or as close to normal as a 78-year-old can be is lying on my back and... Uh, The hernia is on the left-hand side of my penis, and then there's a bump that comes up on the right-hand side. And if if I uh, put some pressure on the left-hand side hernia, nothing happens. Can't feel any change whatsoever. But if I put pressure on the bump uh, on the right side, eventually the bump, and I'm trying to do it now, right now, and it's happening, uh, I can hear it gurgle a little bit. And that means gas is is coming out of that area, uh, leaving whatever causes the bump to drop back into its home slot underneath the area where I'm touching. So when that happens, then I I can walk better. But I I you know, trying to do that in in the uh, transparent tent uh, means that the cot 
is not always available because every time it rains, it picks up uh, an inch or two of water on the bottom, and then you have to dump that and wait for it to dry before you can lie on it. So the last three years have been uh, difficult uh, because first while I was basically sleeping in a bed in the house where the ceiling fell on me. And uh, then sometimes sleeping, sitting up uh, on the back seat of a car, which was half filled with whatever I needed to work with, so I could only do it seated. Now I have a I have a choice uh, of uh, in the summer spring and fall, never turning the furnace on unless I'm cooking something uh, and and lying on the bed on my back as I'm doing right now, getting rid of the bump and then go back out to work. Or if it hasn't rained, lie down on the cot in the other tent, which basically is more practical if I'm going to be meeting people because in the tent, nobody can see me here. Um, although, if they look for the chimney, I'm sure they'll find smoke going up in, in the winter time. <laughs> that basically is a hint that I might not be too far away. Yeah. One of the advantages of the heat in the tent my coffee never goes cold. <laughs> yeah. Outside in 30 below, 10 minutes, you got to take it or leave it. <laughs> mm. yeah. Oh, so you're making coffee in there? That's cool. Yeah. I used to make coffee outside, but it took an hour and a half to get there. You know, an hour for the stove to warm up and 25 minutes to half an hour for the coffee to heat up. When you're standing there waiting to see bubbles up the percolator <laughs> and it's either snowing, raining, or 30 below, uh, it's it's tough. Now, that, that tent, it can handle winds and stuff like that? Right now, with the spikes that I have in the ground, <coughs> I would guarantee it uh, with uh, gusts of uh, under hurricane. And once I get the rest of the spikes in the ground, I don't think a hurricane could move it. Well, sturdy. That's sturdy. So you're good with blankets and stuff or sleeping bag? Uh, I got I got a sleeping bag from uh, uh, a taxi driver that I use as a base, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I got a, a sleeping bag uh, from Scotland, which. Uh, I've never seen the likes of. It is uh, uh, designed to be wide enough. Uh, if if I had to sleep all dressed, which right now I doubt. <laughs> uh, but if I had to, I could sleep all dressed in this. Right now, I could sleep undressed, lying on top of it. I don't have pillows. As it stands now, I'm using a roll of uh, paper towels as the pillows. Yeah. 
outside. And by the way, when when the uh, door is, if both doors are open, flies come in. So you have to remember, uh, in the, the winter time, you don't need to worry about the both the screen and the tent door being closed. You could leave the outside open and the tent open, and at least it would keep flies from being attracted to the heat. But I have a fly swatter. And right now, there are three flies inside. They're still alive, flies? Yeah. Well, they they got to live to make babies who got to live to make more babies who got to live to make babies <laughs> or they won't be here in the spring. Uh, I thought they went like dormant or something. And... Hey, they they lay a nest. I had a a piece of beef uh in in the bedroom. Oh yeah, those and I forgot all about it. And I, <laughs> it was there for three days, and I, I remembered, and I picked it up, and it had all these little white things by the hundreds of thousands uh, creeping along. Thank goodness good. I didn't wait another day, but I, I took, because what they were crawling in was a plastic plate I used to, or paper plate to feed the cats and uh, picnic plates type of thing. And I picked up the plate and put it outdoors so they froze to death. But imagine if I would have had, a, you know, a couple of hundred thousand flies in the bedroom. <laughs> you'd be, um, uh, you'd have uh, uh, a lot of company. Well, yeah. I'm right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that house can never be used for anything but cats. So that's where the cats are staying inside there, right? Yeah. And, and I had um, two cats that uh, went in and out, and one of them during the night I heard screaming. Uh, and I thought for sure it had died. I didn't see it for two days. Uh-huh. And then I uh, spotted it behind the house and I grabbed it. And since then, uh, and uh, her name is Mama Cat. She's given two litters of six kittens. Uh, I put her on my bed and, and uh, she's been there for about two weeks, three weeks now. Uh, and she's trying to get out now, so she must be feeling better. Uh, I don't want her to be out because obviously she had been bitten over the back spine down to the belly. Uh, by but, another cat? By, no, by a, uh, um, what do you call that animal? Looks like a dog. Coyote? No. Coyote, yeah. uh, but the teeth didn't pierce, so I, any damage was internal, either to the ribs or to the soft spot under the belly. And uh, every time I touch her, she'd yelp. Mm. So uh, that's what happens to cat who cats who live outdoors. Oh, uh, it happened outside. It didn't happen in the house. Yeah, I have them outside. The and, coyotes, uh, not... the other one who's outside has now got only one ear. So uh-huh. I don't know if it was in a fight with something else, but lost lost an ear. Uh, the ear is still there, but kind of mushy and hanging over. Uh, so... He still comes in and out of the house. And I had a black and white that never wanted to stay in the house. And as soon as it could get out, got out. And it would come up for something to eat only if I put on the back porch. 
wouldn't come into the house. So I put a plate there on the back porch. But about a week, week and a half, two weeks ago, he disappeared. So maybe he was the lunch for the coyote that dropped Mama. Maybe. Well, I mean, the coyotes, they're not brazen enough to go in the house or anything, right? So. No. no. They'll come to the backyard, but uh, stay uh, 15 feet away from the house. Because um, I was thinking about that when you say you line up your meat outside, they wouldn't, they would, wouldn't they try to steal it? Those type of, I don't know, the, the, the yeah. Well, the foxes were, were similar too, right? They'll sit there and try to. Um, yeah, foxes have to take on small cats. You know, foxes aren't heavy enough, okay. basically, to take on a full-grown cat. That's why he dropped it. So if he doesn't catch it and bite its throat or something right then and there, you can't drag it away. So you find spots in the back where a cat was caught, and in the summertime, the grass is greener around the bones, uh, so the energy has been absorbed into the grass. But in the, in the winter time, you can follow uh, where the cat was dragged to, uh, drug across the back, and eaten in a certain place because they can't basically lift it. Now, of course, you have the other problem: is uh, if you have cats outdoors, then there are litters born outdoors. And if the mama of the litter walks away to go get some uh, food, uh, which is usually a chipmunk or something like that, uh, and another cat walks by, uh, it has basically three choices. It can ignore the litter. It can grab kittens and eat them. Or it can grab kittens and take them home. And it becomes its litter because it had a litter that didn't make it, so it steals somebody else's. Now, that's the same process used by uh, a mountain lion. Uh, what do you call those black, uh, has the word ant in it? Panther? Panther. Uh, Panther would have seen a child. It's probably over millions and billions of years would have killed it or ignored it. But uh, at one stage of the game, it carried the child into the cave and allowed it to feed off of its nipple. They they basically don't give the baby a a choice. They they kind of pull it in, uh, and the baby strikes at at the nipple uh, shortly thereafter. And when the baby is old enough and able to walk, uh it it can pick up things leftovers in in the cave and chew on it uh probably wouldn't be able to eat much in that way but then they make their way outside until they come across uh a goat female goat that just had a litter and by trapping it in some kind of hole, um, they can then feed until they want off of the goat. 
Goats are the worst animal personality <laughs> I've ever seen in the entire world. The uh, father uh, wants sex five times a day. <laughs> the The baby is born and... If the mother doesn't protect the baby, the baby will will die because the father is being interfered with in his daily activities. But if the baby survives uh, and becomes a, a child, um, the father still dominates the mother. And the child attempts to do the same, but the father keeps beating them up. And if the mother, if you put food in a plate and the mother goes to eat, the father knocks her away, butts her away, and eats the food. And until he's fed uh, to his liking, everybody else waits. So what you have to do is put three plates, if you have father, mother, and baby, and you put them wide enough apart so that when the father runs over to the plate the mother is eating, she can run over to his plate and eat there. <laughs> wow. Or the, ba- is... or the baby's plate. <laughs> and the baby will run to the father's plate, you know. They are they are the closest things to Masons <laughs> that I can imagine. All they think about is themselves. Uh, why 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 do you think the goat's nature is like that? Because you had to have a panther, a cat that showed it was ready to share, and a goat number two uh, who's never ready to share. So the basic lesson for the child is that some animals are more likely to be helpful than others, and those animals are cats. And those animals have to be compensated for in being given a final destination of paradise, while the goats have to be compensated for by being given a final place of Pacific. And don't think they're going to go out there to go fishing. They're going out on a block of ice that will melt and allow them to drown at a place where the plates of the earth are crisscrossing one on top of the other, and they go down underneath for a few million years. And when they have been completely broken into its component parts, chemically or minerally speaking, then those parts are dispersed all over the world so they can never come together again. And the parts that are dispersed eventually, billions of years later, come out as part of the liquid in a volcano explosion. That's the definition of hell. And they, everybody that gets to heaven and has done something like has been done to Jennifer, uh, kidnapping Jennifer, disallowing her citizenship, landed immigrant status, all of that stuff, uh, harassing her all the time from birth until today, uh, those people are... Uh, being sentenced to stand in line at the door of the court 
and that line extends uh, beyond uh, imagination. And, uh, for example, uh, I mentioned that uh, if I uh, were uh, to, to penalize the people who have, in fact, held back $4,500 in five months from me right now, which I have, uh, the court, uh, looking at the preliminary evidence, uh, says $1 equals one year. $4,500, which is what they've stolen today, anyone coming within range of causing that theft and their ancestors, starting with great-great-grandmother and grandchildren going down to great-great-grandchildren, all of them are sentenced to 4,500 years in line. That's before going to court. Now, in court, they will remember what they saw about how great it is to live in paradise and how terrible it would be to go to the Pacific. <clears throat> and they have to, when their turn comes up, enter the court and in the court, uh, sit in the audience, which, if I remember correctly, is about 400 uh, souls with it, willing, w- waiting to be analyzed by the court. Uh, and one of them steps forward, goes up on the stage, sits on a chair, uh, and is asked three questions to which his Inability to answer scares him, but in the back of him is a large screen that shows the answers to the three questions. What did you know? When did you know? What did you do about it? And then the judge renders a decision based upon looking at the actual events that had occurred for that per- person. And and they are walked to the door of the courtroom and handed them over to me. And they can't budge in any direction instead of, uh, uh, except for the di- direction I lead them, and that's to a red chair where Jennifer is sitting. And... She's given a briefing from the court on the reasons for the sentence. And only she has uh, the ability to um, change that sentence to uh, not as bad a penalty as as uh, uh, has been a sign, which is probably hell or what what we call Pacific, uh, to uh, uh, time served, for example. Uh, and um, then I can walk them to the door that leads to paradise. If she uh, disregards any request, then I walk them over to Pacific side. Now, all of all of that is is in Jennifer's hands. Uh, the forgiveness part, and all I can say is right now, at this very moment. She is not very forgiving. I wouldn't want to be the person who asks for forgiveness when she finally takes her seat. Right now, she doesn't have to worry about them because they're so far down the line that uh, it'll be a long time before they show up at the court. 
once they die, mind you, we have nothing to do with life and death. Creation can stop something happening, life and death, but doesn't have to and doesn't often. Yeah, life and death. Uh, the last time I, uh, not the last time, but a while ago, Jenny was, she made a post that was concerning, um, the, I guess, bureaucrats in the U.S. Yeah. About, uh, yeah, something about the Democrats, I think it was. Well, uh, Democrats have a much better chance of being bureaucrats than yeah. than uh, Republicans. Yeah. That doesn't mean all Republicans, but it means there's probably uh, a larger portion of Republicans that don't steal because they're rich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And and here, like I told the taxi driver this morning, I said, just, just imagine you have a town called Fatima or Lourdes or a place in Serbia, and an apparition occurs to children. What happens to those towns? Well, millions of people from around the world come to visit the site. Everybody becomes rich, and therefore, nobody has a need to steal. Now we have an opportunity where the other end of the scale, a senior has an apparition. You have a town full of poor people and mediocre wealth people, very few really rich people who don't want any company. And therefore, they don't want to admit that in their riding, in their city, in their suburbs, an apparition occurred because everybody around them will get rich. And then they won't be kissing their asses as much as they do now. So I was asked by the cell, don't the people of your area, Kempville and, and Osford Mills and all that, don't, don't they want to be rich? I said, obviously not. They enjoy the pain of being slaves because they're not the ones that are doing anything to help. Now, if the people of uh, Fatima or Lourdes had had done what they do is disregard what they have heard, half of it their fault for not looking, the other half the media's fault for not reporting, and they're being penalized a lot for all of this. The media is one of the worst penalized groups of people. At, at that decision making process <clears throat> but the poor people are not rushing over here and saying Glenn is there anything I can do we know that you know this is uh, your, your fifth year and um, we know that when Jennifer was here uh, she was told if she made a sign uh, with his name on it and put at the front gate that one day in the next four years, he would be repaired. Any any damage that he had up to that would be repaired. Well, guess what? That happened in Japan last, what is it, last week or the week before? Uh, Zozo. Uh, the Z in the alpha that means you 
You've been going in one direction. You stop. You go backwards down and start over and going in a different direction. Well, ZZ Top is one of the singers groups that I'm told. I never heard them, but I'm told. And and that's what we're talking about. Uh, as long as he lives, he will never know that the cell, the pineal cord, and creation fixed him. It's not the, the doctors that fixed him. It's the guiding hand of the cell and the cord and creation that fixed him. And now he's set to go, and since since they can't attack him on his health anymore, no, or believing that he would never beat Jack Nicholas's record, you can see how the media is attacking his personality every day, uh, saying that he was um, only thinking of himself and uh, uh, narcissistic is what they call it, and uh, completely oblivious to any damage he could do to anybody. Uh, he, he would pay his his coach, for example, fifty thousand dollars a year while he was making millions. And and then he was expecting his coach to pay his meals when they were out together. You know, that's what they're saying about him now. Now, creation repaired the part about his health. I'm waiting to see what they're going to do about his uh, personality. Because I don't believe your personality is made after you're born. I believe it's a descendant personality from your uh, the genes of your parents. Now, he would have, obviously, male, female from mother and father, but also genetic engineering for the purpose of playing golf. It'd be interesting to watch the duration and to see if he gets to the three other uh, tournaments, uh, majors, I think they're called, uh, in order to tie and, and then surpass Mickelson. But people have a hard, hard time demoting a white man to uh, a black man. And they have a hard time upgrading a black man to a level of a white man. So that's the biggest problem he will have to face. I'm told he's now writing a book to set the thing straight. He's been called stingy um, by the media and uh, narcissistic. And so it'd be interesting to see if these uh, uh, idiots in the media are left with gaping throats and mouths watching him win more tournaments and uh, finally realize that, you know, the origin of humans are cats. The origin of modern humans are Africans. And whether you're talking about billions of years ago, hundreds of millions of years ago, or thousands of millions of years ago, 
You can't change anything there. People were born in Africa as modern humans. They were black. Some migrated to what I believe to be southern India, which at the time was linked to Sri Lanka before the separation of Sri Lanka, which means beautiful island, and eventually went north. And uh, all of the states between um, those states that used to be Indian and have become states on their own or anything in the far, uh, not far, but Middle East, group, including Iran and and everybody to the Mediterranean was called Persia. They were all Persians. And if you take a black guy and you remove some of the black, you get brown. And that's what these people are. And when they send uh, what they call... Uh, uh, original people to live in a country, they're brown. So they don't come from Africa, they come from India or any of those countries later on called Persia because the Far East moved more along the color of uh, uh, whitish yellow, whereas we ended up with a reddish white. <clears throat> According to the Indians, that transformation was done in the southern Ontario. And it was done and and the the first Caucasians were put on rafts and sent down the Mississippi out into the Gulf of Mexico across to North Africa, where from Morocco they made their way into uh, the Middle East as well. And every race uh, in the West was denied the privilege of growing uh, in size, and remain basically hunter foragers while the cosmetic white people had been made for the job of agriculture. And the uh, agriculture is the strongest weapon that one must have in war because if you can't feed your soldiers, they will die no matter how big their guns are. So that's the history of the world, and that's why uh, white people like me were allowed to grow in numbers in order to take over uh, the power through the use of money in the world. And the worst group among us all Uh, Number one, the gray nuns and blue nuns. Mm -hmm. Number two, the billionaires. Both of which uh, I wouldn't allow on the farm. The cell needing a billion dollars for the project for this farm has set it at uh, 100 uh, million dollars is the maximum that people can donate to that project. Uh, Tiger Woods fits in the category by having less than a billion, somewhere around 800 million. And uh, people between Tiger Woods and a hundred million dollars don't need any more cash. And they could help. Could they choose to help? 
They could deny help should they choose to deny it. And all of that will determine where in the lineup they are when they get to the other side. You know, we, we, our role is to begin the project. It was intended when Jennifer was here that the cell would hand over $35,000 as its first payment. As soon as Jennifer was kidnapped and, and, and Tom was killed, and a destruction of the house occurred by shutting off the hydro, which meant the sump pump wouldn't pump out any water, uh, and and everything would shift and, and begin to fall apart, and rats would run all over the the ceiling, digging holes into the ceilings, looking down to see if there's any food in that room as they did in my bedroom. And then if one was stupid enough to drop down to let the other ones know exactly how much food was there, they'd realize they were in the middle of 20 cats who ate the hell out of them in a matter of an hour and uh, decided that finding a better place to look for food was the only option left. So since then, I haven't had any rats running through the ceiling, but I've had a piece of the ceiling fall on my head while I tried to go to bed in my former room (coughs) before I was married. So all of that, tells you what I think you need to know and what other people need to know. And cash is always important uh, because cash is what they stole from me. And it was the money I used to feed myself and Jennifer would feed the animals. Now she has to feed me and I'm worried always about you know when when will it all run out for the cats so that's where i am made a big improvement over the last couple of weeks with the tent now uh, that i have a bed in it it solves my problem of cooking in the winter time or lying on my back in the winter time uh, to get the bump away. Uh, so some people like, you know, the people of Brockville and Scotland and, and you two have done more than what is expected of you. But there are millions of people out there that should be participating in some way or the other. Should they choose to disbelieve, that's their business. Until they get, of course, to the other side. Then it's no longer their control. Whether they be billionaires or poor people, if they know what's happening and they choose to disbelieve, their place is not in paradise. I mean, I wish you could get that that hernia taken care of, but you don't want to. Um... No, the doctor would kill me. <laughs> it wouldn't be his own opinion. He would simply, as in happens with everybody who goes to the hospital in Canada, they have a computer, they type uh, the name and whatever is on the card they give you. Uh-huh. And at the other end comes up, do not resuscitate. <laughs> uh, well, 
I mean, you so could... They, they want a job for the rest of their lives. They better not resuscitate. They have, um, I mean, I know billionaires probably have something like that, or rich people. They have, um, like, private doctors. Maybe yeah. that could be... If I had the money for a private doctor, that would be... Yeah. Maybe that... Uh, Maybe Millionaires I... don't need to participate in anything. Millionaires are good enough. Hmm. Millionaires have penance to make before they participate. Hmm. And most of them most of them inherit the money. But giving to groups who are supposed to take care of the poor is giving to bureaucrats who steal the money to give to bureaucrats. Yep. You know, they just had uh, <laughs> one of the, the the people who are running for president, like uh, Sanders and Warren. They're, what they're saying is basically like Warren said, oh, I want to have a new health plan that will cost uh, uh, trillions and trillions of dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, the name I was looking for is Sitka. Sitka. In Alaska. Sitka in Russia. And Sitka spruce trees here. Mm-hmm. That's the place in Alaska. And, and the, if you translate Sitka from Russian into English, it's guardian angel which is what I call the two from Brockville, the two from <laughs> Scotland, and the two from New York. <laughs> Why are we coming in twos? <laughs> coming in twos. <laughs> Seems to be a defense against ghosts. <clears throat> You're the better twos, <laughs> the new twos. Number two is number one now because yeah. number one went underground and became an ant. One. And rats became bats that became cats that became lions. Well, the ants are at the mantle. Well, I think uh, it's going to get darker sooner now because we we pushed the clocks back, I think. I think it was this morning, right? What was that? I think now you're going to have less light, less time for light. Yeah. We pushed the clocks back, what was it, yesterday morning? Yeah, this morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I don't want to steal all your daylight that you have, you know. Yeah. So I keep that in mind. for me to go. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to you people. Yeah. Another I'll time. Yeah, I'll try Bye. to call soon. <laughs> Bye, Danny. Bye, George. Bye, right. everybody listening. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> all right. Bye.